minute, I uh, want to start out with some housekeeping notes. We're going to be talking about five ways to attract more qualified software leads to your website. And uh, so we have kind of a, a uh, you know, a lot of information to share with you today. So I uh, just want to take you through some housekeeping notes. If you can note your webinar pane, you'll see that there's a couple buttons next to your name. There's a hand and there's a question mark. If you should have any questions throughout the presentation, we're going to be monitoring uh, the question box and we'll be um, hopefully collaborating as much as possible with your, qu your questions and answering them as we go through the presentation. If for some reason we don't see your question, we'll definitely get to it at the end of the presentation. And we just appreciate as much collaboration as possible. So we invite you to ask any question. There's no question, uh, there's no wrong questions. And you know, marketing is a moving target target and uh, it's my philosophy that collaboration is really what brings for successful marketing and so any ideas thoughts questions please feel free to um, go ahead and click on that question mark button dialog box will open up and you can indicate your question in that dialog box so I'm super excited today because we have Don Yeager with uh, Acumatica, Don Jaeger, I always want to say Jaeger, Director of Partner Marketing, or Partner Recruiting, and um, thank you so much, Don, uh, for sponsoring this with Acumatica, our, the series of inbound marketing-related webinars. Uh, so, uh, Don, thank you for joining us. Thank you, our pleasure, happy to do so, and, and look forward to a good session. And we also are going to be having Patty Benitez, the Director of Channel Sales and American Payment Solutions. She's going to join us a little bit later uh, just to talk about how she has started implementing and putting the practices that we're going to share with you uh, in play over at American Payment Solutions and how she, as the Director of Channel Sales, is benefiting from those inbound opportunities. Uh, we also have Trisha Hart again with us, too, over at American Payment Solutions, who will also collaborate with Patty. And so we thank everybody for joining us uh, on this webinar. So just to start off, here is um, just an introduction slide talking a little bit about my experience and my business partner's experience, Kathy Graham. We started out working with ERP software VARs and third parties over 19 years ago. So we have lots of experience in this area um, trying to uh, find and develop opportunities uh, for new ERP software sales. And uh, that is not you know, always an, an easy task. So uh, we're going to be sharing our experience, what's worked, what hasn't worked in the past, and uh, how we can help everyone move forward with the experience, knowledge that we've learned over the years. Um, I myself was a channel manager at, at Sage Software from 2000 to 2005. Kathy was a channel manager from 1997 to 2005. Kathy went on over to Avalara from 2006 to 2008. Then she went to two, into it from 2008 to 2012. I went uh, worked for a channel partner from 2005 to 2009. Several channel partners under his umbrella uh, came uh, to uh, work with me on a consulting basis uh, for uh, sales and marketing related activities. So I not only worked for DeRosa Mangold Consulting, but I was consulting for four or five other partners under Mike DeRosa's umbrella. And then so I started uh, Sales Optimization Solutions, earned my HubSpot inbound marketing certification in 2009, and started helping business partners and third parties implement the HubSpot inbound marketing platform. I did that until 2012, and I'm still doing that today, but we also started ERP VAR in 2012, where we, it's a network and it's a community type website where uh, we can leverage the relationships between all the different partners and the third party providers uh, by way of our guest blog and all the different search engine optimized location pages that our partners subscribe to and all the content that we publish on ERPVAR. 
Uh, so some of our most notable clients are V Technologies, uh, Scanco, American Payment Solutions, Clients First, E2B Technologies, and many more. So um, we're going to get right into the presentation here. What is marketing? And um, Don, I just wondered, you know, maybe you could just what when you think of marketing, what what do you how would you define marketing? I think it's well, different. It can be a little bit different for everybody. Yeah, well, for me, of course, all the things that you might learn in some of the books and so forth come to mind. But when you say, what's the first thing that comes to mind about marketing? For me, marketing is about getting a message out that is going to cause somebody to, number one, be interested in it, and number two, take action on it. So it's really being in the right places for the interested parties to take note that you might represent something that they need and knowing the right people uh, to get in front of those prospects. Would you agree? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. So um, what we're going to talk about during this presentation is inbound links and how important they are to search engine optimization. And inbound links to me represent the connections that you have on the internet. So just much like you know when you hire a salesperson, you hire salespeople with connections. Well, it's the same thing with your website. You wanna have your website as connected as possible so that you can be pulling traffic from all the possible avenues that you can um, leverage with your physical relationships that your salespeople might have uh, by putting links on your part, strategic partner's websites, by doing press releases. We're going to talk about all this kind of these kinds of uh, inbound strategies. Um, strong calls to action. So once you get all that traffic to your website, you want them to know what to do once they get there. So we're going to talk about uh, how important it is to have strong calls to action. We talked a little bit about that last month. Uh, social media engagement, how to engage uh, your audience, your target market via social media. And we're going to talk a little bit about leveraging those ISV relationships who so desperately want to solidify the relationships with you as the channel partners uh, and how you both can win by leveraging one another and um, collaborating on one another's websites, just like you do in your physical relationships off the internet, uh, how you can, how they would, you know, win by participating with you on your website, and how you can win by participating with them on their website, and then how do you respond to those opportunities? How do you? Uh, set up nurture programs to keep those opportunities in the funnel and what stages of the funnel they come into determine really how you're going to respond to them immediately and then continue to nurture them as they grow through the sales funnel. So we're going to be talking about inbound links first of all and why they are important and there's two real basic types of inbound links. There's inbound links uh, are two, two uh, basic uh, forms of, of links that are important when it comes to search engine optimization. So inbound links from websites are what give your website authority. So um, and then the amount of authority that those inbound links give you are determined by the types of websites that those inbound links are on and what kind of page rank they have. So if you have an inbound link coming from CNN, then that's going to give you a lot more authority than an inbound link coming from maybe a sister channel partner website that doesn't have nearly as much traffic or page rank as CNN. Uh, and you definitely want to think about optimizing your on-page SEO. You definitely want to do that. Uh, and you want to optimize your off-page SEO. So when we optimize our on-page SEO, those are the things that we have control of, like your meta description, your page title, your URL, 
how you structure that page so that it gets indexed in Google with your keyword terms or the search engines with your keyword terms. And then you want to optimize your off-page SEO as much as possible as well. So examples of off-page SEO or maybe a video that you've published on YouTube and you have a link in that video coming back to your website, you are in control when you publish a, a video on YouTube of the title, the meta description, and then the link that you put in the meta description and what page on your website you want to link that YouTube video back to. So that's off-page SEO, even though it's your YouTube channel, it's actually a link from YouTube. And the page rank that you're sending back to your website is determined by the comprehensive page rank of your YouTube channel. So um, that's an example. Press releases are ex an example of off-page SEO. If you guest blog with a guest blogging website like ERP VAR or ERP software blog, that's how you can develop your off-page SEO. And it's your off-page SEO that really determines how well you are ranking in the search engines because that signals to Google that you're not only working on your own website, but you're networking with all the right people and all the right websites off your website. So it shows the search engines that you're connected, just like you are, just like your salespeople are that you hire you want to hire salespeople that have those relationships. So, you know, that's how the search engines see your website from a search engine optimization standpoint. So you have to make sure you're leveraging those relationships as much as possible and then publishing those con that content, press releases, YouTube videos, all those kinds of things that help push those links back to your website. Social media participation, you can get the third party uh, ISV relationships to participate with pushing your messaging out there. Maybe some of the third parties will even give you their Twitter feed, um, access username and password access to publish your blogs through their Twitter. They love their pictures and uh, they want to be in front of the audience, your same audience, you share the same target audience. They want their picture and they want their feeds updated with your compelling content. So it's a win-win if they trust you with their social media profiles where now you're not, you're not only pushing your blogs and information out through your own social media profiles, you're also able to push all your content out to your partner social media profiles. And they don't all, always have a lot of time or they're not always paying attention exactly to you know, which Twitter posts that they that you sh they should be reposting for you. So why not just you know automate that when you're publishing your information? So if you have some strong relationships with other companies where maybe you can trade your social profiles with them, and they can publish through your social media because you know you don't compete with them, you share the same target market, you know that they write compelling information. Why wouldn't you want your picture to show up? You know, with a LinkedIn group that has 80,000 members, why wouldn't you always want to be trying to be in front of that LinkedIn group as long as you trusted that it wasn't too promotional and it was more educational and helpful information that was being associated with your profile. So you have to trust those relationships that they know how to represent your individual brand when they're posting that information. So, how do we do this successfully? Well, we really need to figure out a clear and concise search engine keyword strategy. Stay consistent and just do the work on a consistent basis. If you decide that you're going to blog every week, blog every week. If you decide you're going to do two how-to tutorials for the software that you represent every month, do the two software tutorials for your software every month and post them up to YouTube. Just make a plan and stay consistent and don't deviate and I promise you, you'll get results. So here's one of our clients, V Technologies. We decided to uh, focus on shipping software. So everything we've done with V Technologies and press releases, YouTubes, blogs, we always put the word shipping software in the title 
in the URL in the meta description and in the hyperlinks for press releases or YouTube videos back to the website because the hyperlinks will have shipping software in the URL uh, and then uh, we'll have shipping software in the meta description so that sends clear signals to the search engines that we want to be optimized for shipping software. Well, what is that done? If you do a Google search for them right now, you'll see that they're number one for Dynamics shipping, so Dynamics GP shipping software, Sage shipping software, QuickBooks shipping software, and I believe they're number eight in Google for shipping software itself. They used to be number three, but we just need to stay consistent with more and more content with them because as the the um, landscape gets more competitive you have to make sure you're keeping up with the content that you're publishing out there and uh, so as we said YouTube videos blogs pages press releases guest blogs all the off-page activities that you can populate with your keyword term that's going to help the search engines understand that shipping software is the keyword that you want to optimize for and that all those relationships that you have are giving you a vote for shipping software. So all those websites are saying, hey, search engines, V technology should be optimized for shipping software. We agree. And that's basically what popularity is. Don, did you have any questions on this? Questions? No. <laughs> is, it, is this pretty uh, clear and under, understandable? Yeah, and I, I think it is. Yeah, no questions. But what I would say is even with Acumatica, um, some of you that might be out on our site or, or recently, you might detect that we've got a, a different look and feel too. And we're, there are some pages, many that have been converted over to this new look and feel and others that haven't. But, but the other thing I would say is that, you know, we try to be consistent about the blogging. We try to be consistent about adding value. We try to be consistent about um, where we're, we're putting things in the look and feel. And we've also got a key, keen eye on the search engine optimization. So, so the keywords, we've got about 300 that we're tracking and and many times when a partner comes on board and wants to wants to improve their website it's often a good time to do a complete overhaul on a partner's website when they add another product many of them have the older look and feel and and it's it's great when you're working with somebody that will share the search engine words and optimization and we've also just put something into place whereas if our partners link to our site so they increase their search engine optimization capabilities like off their own site what you were just explaining we have the capability to to understand where that came from and direct those quote leads if you will or suspects back to the partner whose website originated the link to Acumatica so things like that I'll I'll give all everybody in this community uh, I think more authority as you're talking about that's collaboration, right? That's working together, and it's just the same. Uh, it's it's the same perspective as far as networking. You know, at a party, you want to make sure that you're talking to as many many people as possible. If you have your target market at a party, uh, you want to be networking and passing out your cards to as many people and um, collaborating with them on how you can partner together, and you know people can get leads from all different um, sources and if if you have your links on Acumatica's website that's extremely valuable because Acumatica is out there networking you know with a lot more people potentially than you are um, so that could bring more traffic back to your website that brings a lot of page rank back to Acumatica because there's many more partners like yourselves that are interacting with Acumatica so that pushes more page rank back to you when you're participating with them and uh, I was going to say another thing that that we've started doing too because sometimes partners will say well it's kind of hard to come up with the kind of content that we'd like to have and so forth so we tend to publish things in such a fashion and then push out an email to our partners that will say 
okay, if you're active on Twitter, here's the link to mention this. If you're active on LinkedIn, here's, here's the link so it's all ready to, to be posted into LinkedIn. So we're, we're helping our partners amplify the messages out, which, which I think helps them too. And that helps them stay in front of their audience, right, with new compelling content. They can't stay in front of their audience unless they have some sort of link to publish. And, you know, it's very difficult for partners to have the resources. A lot of partners have a re the resources to do that on a daily basis. So it's great for Acumatica to provide that type of content to allow their picture to continually be displayed in the in social media you know with that extra piece of content that they just didn't have the resources maybe to write so um it's a win-win for everyone correct i agree so um you know it's come to me that a lot of partners you know they want to blog they have good intentions when it comes to blogging um and but maybe they just don't know the types of topics to blog about or you know they don't know if they're going to get much return on the time that they spend blogging so i wanted to provide a few uh, examples of some successful blogs that have been published on our website by business partners and uh, if you can see here erp implementation strategies the pros and cons of the a big bane versus phased rolled out um, we went mobile last March. So there's two, um, two blogs showing here. One's the mobile version and one's the other version. And, and so the, the traffic associated here is the uh, version that uh, was associated with um, the non-mobile version of this blog. So that's why there's two entries here. But you can see that it's gotten thousands and thousands, thousands and thousands of hits. And the reason why this particular blog has gotten thousands and thousands of hits and this particular blog has gotten a thousands and thousands, and this one too, is not only because Jeannie Lee is an excellent writer from E2B Technologies, one of our clients, uh, but because this information is compelling to the audience. So when you send the blog out to social media and multiple, multiple profiles sharing this particular top, these particular topics, it gets an, a wider opportunity to be seen by editors of high page rank websites like Tech Target, like software advice, I think, referenced this material in the past. Um, I think Find Accounting Software picked this up at one time. So you can see here, you know, these are just keywords. This is a HubSpot screenshot. We use HubSpot for our inbound marketing. And this is a screenshot just of the analytics of these particular blogs. Uh, you can see that the keywords that we're actually physically tracking in our HubSpot flat, uh, platform are identified here as 10. That just doesn't mean, you know, that we're, we don't have more optimization than that. This just means that these are the only keywords associated with this blog that we're tracking. And then um, you can see here we have 11 links coming back to this blog. That's because when we sent it out to the search and our social media, the um, large, you know, high page rank websites like the ones I just referred to pointed back to the blog, referencing this blog and their own material. And so if you did a search right now on ERP implementation strategies, we're gonna be in the top three, sometimes we're number one, sometimes we're number two. But these visits here aren't from social media. They're not from direct traffic. They're from search engines. And the search engines have indexed this blog and recognize this blog of, as having high authority for the keyword terms implementation, ERP implementation strategy, ERP implementation strategies, because these other authoritative websites have decided to reference this particular blog and their material. So even though, you know, it's not, we're not having to do any effort with this blog anymore, 
it's been indexed and picked up by the search engines, it's pushing a lot of search traffic back to our website just because we sent it out through social media. And I think we only sent this out once through social media. So if I send this out again through social media, then I'll just give it an extra push of uh, search engine optimization and it could, you know, make it could place in in uh, page on the first line of Google or the first um, search return for ERP implementation strategies because all those social profile links will again be pointing to it and then it's possible that another um, high profile website will pick it up again. So these are some examples of um, blogs that have gotten thousands of reads with us. This is just a simple blog, but I think that we're ranking really high for how to create a credit memo in Sage 100, how to create a credit memo in Mass 90, and that, you know, is a market leading ERP software, so people, you know, do searches on how to do things in their ERP software so they can be self-sufficient, and so um, thus, we're getting most of these hits. If I showed you the page details you would see are coming from searches, and they come to this day from searches. So we really hit a home run with these blogs, and these are types of blogs, obviously, that are popular. If you have any questions, I see that Ashley has a question, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that question up here. Okay, I would like to know how to sign up for those emails. I have never received one. Hmm. Ashley, I'm going to get with you after the webinar. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but maybe subscribing to our blog, I'm going to guess. Uh, thank you for that question. And then everybody else, if you have any questions, please do um, click on that question mark button next to your name on the webinar pane and indicate your question. And we will read it live, and hopefully we can uh, collaborate with you and make sure that everything's making sense. This is a lot of information we're sharing here. Uh, so popularity and leadership, you know, we all know they're just authenticated by belief and agreement. If, you know, Obama was elected president because most of the population decided and agreed that he should be our president. So he's our president. So if uh, all the partners agree that uh, software advice is a great resource to go and find ERP software, then the partners might link to software advice and might make software advice the most authoritative website on the internet. Same thing with ERP bar. It's authenticated by belief and agreement. So everyone pointing back and referencing the material is what causes your website to be indexed by the search engines and to be pushed up in popularity because you're going to get by far way more visits from search by blogging, doing those YouTube videos, press releases, and you know blogging consistently, having that strategy, the search engines will start to send you so much more traffic than direct traffic, than uh, email marketing traffic, than social media traffic. You'll see you're getting by far way more visits from the search engines and that's very targeted uh, audience visits because those are the keywords that you decided in the beginning that you strategized to do every all your content that you published was going to be around those keywords. And then so it looks like, oh, um, Don, Ashley one, uh, is looking for a little bit of clarification about the Acumatica um, offer that you just shared. Um, she's referring to the emails from Acumatica containing the social media links. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so I can get Ashley's email after the fact here, and I'll, I'll forward an example. Perfect. And and if, if Ashley's already an existing partner and is, is not receiving those, then what we can do is make sure that we get her subscribed to the right um, uh, either newsletter or feed, distribution list, I guess I should say, so that she'll get them in the future. Perfect. And then, so again, so search engines give websites authority, and it's the same way that people give people authority. So you have your internal page that you have full control of, 
that you decide that you want to build on ERP implementation strategy. So now you say, V Technologies, makers of Starship and Shipgear, you're my favorite shipping software. Can I guest blog on your website about ERP implementation strategies? And Caroline Walsh, Walsh, my dear friend over at V Technologies, will say, sure, please, guest blog as much as you can on my website, because that helps me with new ERP-related content publishing, and it helps you because I get 10,000 visits to my blog a month. And so I'll push that traffic back to your internal page because you have hyperlinks with ERP implementation strategy in the guest blog on V Technologies. So that sends a signal over to the search engine saying, hey, V Technology says I should be optimized for ERP implementation strategies. And then you turn it around over to ERP VAR and you write a similar blog on ERP implementation strategies. Both V Technologies and ERP VAR post that blog out to a number of social media profiles, way more than a typical partner could have access to. And then those social media profiles come back to the blog on V Technologies and ERP VAR, where your links in the blog come back to your website and pushes that optimization back to your website for ERP implementation strategies. So you have a nice call to action button that's clear and concise on your page that tells them to download a wire white paper about uh, ERP implementation strategies. So now you're starting to convert that traffic into contacts that you're going to set up in your nurture program, which we're going to talk about later. So it's all about leveraging your relationships and networking. So talking about strong call to actions, um, this is just a simple call to action. We talked uh, at length about call to actions last month, uh, but I wanted to insert them here because they're a huge component in inbound marketing. You want your call to action buttons to be simple, and the button itself, you want it to be two words or less. So this one here, effective calls to action, featured download, this is one of HubSpot's call to action buttons, and it's one of their most popular, most effective call to action buttons. Download now. You could create this in PowerPoint. It's not like you need to have uh, a graphic design program to create this button. And if you're using WordPress and you're not using HubSpot, you could just upload that image into WordPress link it to a landing page where you have a summary of all the benefits of that white paper in a paragraph and a little form for them to fill out and now they become your contact. So um, here's just a couple examples of, of calls to actions that I thought were really effective so I went ahead and uh, included them in, in this presentation. So this is um, obviously a vacation type website with they they're targeting their target market is is targeting the adventure just relaxing family and romantic so they have four major target markets and once you click on those buttons it takes you these buttons these four individual buttons will take you to a different landing page and you can sign up to receive notifications for those types of different vacations and here's a couple other calls to actions, go premium, play free. Um, these are buttons that you can push, just super simple. So now social media engagement. So our goal with social media engagement is to get those authority, authoritative inbound social media links. So we want those um, thought leaders to be picking up our uh, blogs, our videos, our landing pages, if we're sharing them through social media. We want to get those thought leaders like Don to um, share, like, share, retweet those types of uh, pieces of content. Uh, so we want to, in order to do that, in order to get thought leaders to want to help you, it 
your blogs or your content need to be really educational, right? Not so promotional because they want the blog that they share or the piece of content that they share to add to their authority and their clout. So post educational, helpful blogs to large LinkedIn groups. So there's a LinkedIn group out there that's called ERP Community. I think it has 88,000 um, 88, members. There's CFO. Um, there's a bunch of uh, CFO related groups out there that have thousands and thousands and thousands of, of members. So posting an educational, helpful CFO related blog to those groups are going to get you many more views than posting it to, you know, a group that might have under 500 members. We actually manage a group called Accounting Software Selection. And that one now has, I think, around 9,000 members. So um, it's growing, it grows every day. So it's kind of like a domino effect. Once you start a LinkedIn group, more and more um, members start wanting to join those LinkedIn groups. And, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to get the momentum going, but once you get the momentum, it just, you start to see hundreds of people asking to join in. Uh, so avoid penalty, don't cheat, don't be going out and buying Facebook likes or Twitter followers, uh, and just know that your helpful content is going to earn you your likes, your shares, your retweets, those are all links coming back. Those are all pieces of authority that the search engines are picking, are picking up that are in favor of your popularity. So if your third-party relationships are sharing your content, then that means your target market is reading your content because they share the same target market. Uh, so again, authoritative, authoritative websites might see your content and link to it because of this wide reach that you're getting by leveraging your relationships. So how do you leverage your relationships? You guest blog on your partner websites or your ISV, your favorite ISV's websites. You blog on your own website blog on strategic partner websites. So maybe you have strategic partners that aren't ISVs. Just blog in as many places as you can. But before you decide that you want to make a commitment to blogging on, on a particular website, just make sure it has a high rate of traffic coming to it. So usually um, the ISV websites have marketing people who are constantly publishing material, and constantly marketing new information. And so they have a higher authority than, you know, a typical channel partner site just because they're just a bigger company. And it's great to leverage those relationships because you can bring some of that traffic that they've earned back to your website. Uh, so once again, blogging equals inbound links via social media. Blogging equals on-page SEO and off-page SEO because of those links coming back in. And so your guest blogging on a popular website that allows for guest blogging gets you that immediate inbound link. So how do we respond to opportunity? Well, we want to understand what that prospect is looking to accomplish, right? And so there's different stages of the buyer's journey. So d depending on how you decide to set up your response strategy, you might consider that the folks that come in at the top of the funnel that just downloaded a white paper, they might be put in one type of nurture bucket that you're going to invite to your webinars um, about that particular topic that they just downloaded the, the white paper for. But you want to make sure that that you're responding immediately in some shape or form based on the stage that they're in in that buyer's journey in, in the funnel, in the sales funnel. So you want to understand how, the, you know, how to delicately respond. Is it a phone call? Is that going to be too, too invasive? Or do we put them and uh, do we immediately respond to them with the white paper and then ask them to subscribe to our blog? So that would be all top of the funnel type of responses. So 
if you do, if the prospect does inquire directly with you, understand their requirements prior to suggesting a solution. You don't want to prescribe a solution uh, when you don't know all the facts about exactly what it is they're looking for. So nurture those top of the funnel prospects by inviting them to events, sharing your newsletters, uh, sharing press releases, things of that nature. So here's just stages of the buyer's journey, just to clarify a little bit. So when they come in and they uh, sign up, uh, so sub subscribe just to your blog, and they have not visited your website in the past, but they thought your, your information was compelling, so they decided to subscribe to updates, blog updates. That might be the top of the funnel. So you set up a nurture campaign for those who uh, come in just from a blog subscription. So they, they fall into a nurture bucket where you're going to now invite them to a, a webinar maybe or send them a, your video tutorials or ask them to sign up for some training or what have you. So, you, you know, you just have your different unaware uh, nurture campaigns that you set up that are all automated through your inbound marketing system or your email marketing system. If they've indicated that they are interested, then maybe you want to send them an ebook um, or analyst papers or blogs that um, are related to their interest, interests. Uh, so now, you know, problem acknowledged. Now you're inviting them to webinars, podcasts, seminars, events. And uh, now maybe you decide that your sales team can only physically phone call the prospects who are actively looking for a solution. So now this is when the marketing team hands over the opportunity to the salespeople, and the salespeople really um, follow up. Uh, with phone calls and presentations uh, to try and win the business. So in summary, marketing is building and maintaining those relationships. So websites are like us. So if we build and maintain the right relationships. We'll get found by prospects who are looking for your ERP software system. So same thing with websites. If you build and maintain the right website relationships, the search engines will send prospect, qualified prospects to your pages that could end up as ERP software sales for the topics that you search engine optimized your pages for. And so here's some examples of our success stories. And thank you so much, Patty, for being with us here today. If you could maybe just elaborate a little bit about what we've done with um, American Payment Solutions and how that's you know kind of worked along these lines for you. Absolutely, my pleasure, Adrian. Great presentation. Um, a lot of good information from Don and from you, good examples. I really appreciate the invitation. Um, so I just want to tell everyone, connecting is everything. I think that's where most of us as, um, as members of the ERP channel, so to speak, can appreciate the fact that partnering and connecting with other partners makes our product so much more available to everybody out there. I can tell you as of a year ago, not too many people knew about American Payment Solutions. And um, thanks to Adrian's help and connecting us with so many different partners and so many different channels, we've been able to get the word out about our products and services. Um, we're able to leverage, of course, the relationships, but we do know and understand for a fact that consistency is really what's going to help add value. So we've taken advantage of different things that Adrian has offered. Um, she's been a, a really good teacher and instructor as far as marketing is concerned, so thank you, Adrian. Um, and we've taken that to the next level where we actually are creating our own initiative in-house and taking advantage of what she's taught us to continue to leverage the relationships with our partners. Uh, we've had many successful webinars now with different developers. And one of the things that I like about the webinars, 
especially uh, through ERP VAR, of course, is the fact that um, we not only amplify our content, but we help amplify our partners' content as well, as Don had mentioned at the beginning. So um, that's my experience so far. We've been able to uh, become better known within the different ERP channels, and we'd love to continue to do so. So uh, thank you very much, Adrian. So all that work that you've done has caused you to be more authoritative. And so just, you know, would you be willing to work with some of these partners out there, Patty, and help them by allowing them access to your blog and maybe submit some ERP-related blogs that might not have to do with credit card processing? But obviously, you're interested in acquiring that same target market that are in ERP. So would you be willing to allow... Do you think American Payment Solutions would be willing to allow partners to collaborate by way of guest blogs with you? Without, without a doubt, Adrian. Up until this point, we had been knocking on partners' doors so that they would allow us to blog uh, as guest bloggers. And now it's definitely our pleasure to accept anybody who would like to join us and be a, 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 a guest blogger with us as well. And you, you have several employees that have uh, indicated their social profiles into your HubSpot inbound marketing platform so that when you do publish a blog from an ERP partner, it not only will go through the partner's social profile when they share it, but it will go also go through the hundred or so social profiles with all your employees that have indicated your Twitter, their LinkedIn, their Facebook password usernames and passwords so the partners blog will be shared through many many more social profiles via American payment solutions than just their own and that helps you Patty because you're helping the partner distribute their compelling ERP related content and it helps the partner because they're reaching so much more audience that's a great point Adrian and I'm a great example of that um, I had been working with an ERP channel for well over 16 years. I, I want to say about 18 years. And for the record, I started when I was seven years old. Um, and because of that LinkedIn profile that I brought to the company, I was able to share information about American Payment Solutions with all of these connections, as well as information about the partners that are now uh, providing webinars together with us. So it's not just the APS contacts that are being targeted or being touched, I should say. Also, each one of our individual employees contacts in LinkedIn are being touched. So that just brings more prospects to the table. So perfect. Um, and then if you guys have any questions, if anyone in the audience has any questions, here's my direct phone number, my email address. And I do have some several questions here that have been uh, indicated. So how do you do a landing pages a landing page for your downloads? Thank you, Anna, for that question. It's very simple. You, if uh, you're using WordPress, for example, or you're using HubSpot or any type of content management system that allows you to publish pages to your website, you just create a new page and you search engine optimize with your keyword terms that you're um, seeking that landing page. But that landing page can't be duplicate to any other pages on your website with those same search words. You just have to have that. You, your URL has to be a little bit slightly different from every other page. And you just put a little paragraph about what is what value is in it for the prospect or the visitor to download that white paper or watch that video. Just a summary. You know, uh, I can pull up a website here and give you an example. Here, let's look at um, V Technologies. And they have their website on um, WordPress. And they also use HubSpot for their landing pages. So I'll show you just an example. So if we go into Starship, learn more. Uh, you see they have just this simple call to action button that I created myself in, Word, in uh, PowerPoint. I'm not a graphic designer. I didn't design this website, 
but I help them with their inbound marketing. So I take whatever you have and I insert call to action buttons like this one here. So this is just an example. So this is on their main Starship page and you click the button and it takes you, this is what's called a landing page. So uh, Starship ship gear and then so a blurb about the four benefits that were, were promised. You put your, your uh, first name, last name, email, company name, phone number, and you say watch now. That takes you to a page with a bunch of different ERP interfaces where you click a button that says watch now because you know all, there's a bunch of different ERPs that they integrate with. They're all right here. So we have a video page for each of these integrations and they say watch now and they get to watch their particular ERP um, list of videos uh, that pertains to them. Uh, and then so now they've bec they come they become a watch now nurture bucket for that particular ERP. And we will start to invite them to webinars. We'll start to send them their newsletter. Anything that has to do with that ERP interface that's newsworthy. Maybe there's the, a new dim weight initiative for Starship where, you know, it can calculate rates at a better rate than, you know, doing it manually. They rate shop through multiple carriers. There's all re kinds of reasons why you would want to use Starship as an, as an end user. Uh, so they fall into a nurture bucket and we continue to market to them based on where they are in the funnel. So hopefully, Anna, that um, answers your question. And Mark, um, we do work with a number of business partners. Um, it looks like you uh, have indicated that you see a lot of third-party solution providers. Uh, we do work with a lot of business partners on ERP VAR where they, um, that's all ERP VAR is, is really business partners who are providing their guest blogs on a daily basis onto our blog. And we send those guest blogs through our network of social media profiles. So uh, this is a business partner, business partner, Mantra Logics, uh, Clients First in Texas, TM Group in uh, Michigan. Um, this is Mantra Logics again. So this is a place for business partners to syndicate their uh, expert knowledge via our guest blog and our wide network of social media profiles that other business partners have offered us so that we can publish this data through their profiles because again they want their picture to come up as much as possible in front of the audience. So ERP VAR is essentially a place for business partners but we also do a lot of events for third parties. So we have one coming up for ScanCo. And so we invite anyone in our Sage for this one, we would invite anyone in our Sage Warehouse Management Nurture Bucket to this webinar. So that's how we work with the third parties, but we open up the third parties, like Patty just mentioned, to the business partners so that the business partners can be in front of more of the targeted audience by way of their websites too. So we help seal your relationships with the third party solution providers. So I hope that answer your, answers your question there. And I'm not seeing any more questions and we're six minutes under. So Don, I wondered if you could just take a, a moment to um, talk a little bit about your Acumatica partner program and how partners uh, can help leverage you from a marketing standpoint by signing up with Acumatica. Well, that's a, that's a great idea. Thank you. I'm happy to do that. So uh, what Acumatica is doing is looking for good, solid ERP experience partners to extend our reach in the marketplace, uh, specifically because our only go-to-market strategy is through partners. So we don't sell anything direct. We don't, um, we don't have anybody on our team that would compete with you. And so as a result, everything that we do is in support of our partners. So that includes marketing. When our partners come on board, what we ask, uh, what we ask folks to do is give us an idea of what they're doing right now, 
for marketing, what's successful for them, what things they'd like to leverage once they add Acumatica to the portfolio, and then also try to find ways where we can augment what they're already doing to help drive more traffic specifically around, usually when they're picking up a new product, it's because they really want a true cloud ERP solution rather than many times it's a, a legacy solution that they're representing. So we help them with the search engine optimization keywords. We can, um, you can actually take content from our site and repurpose it. We have on our partner portal, we have a whole marketing section uh, for our partners to access. And that includes everything from, let's say, webinars or seminars in a box, campaigns that are turnkey that relate to specific, let's say, target market segments like oh, manufacturing or distribution or professional services. We also have people on the team that will help partners with their marketing um, initiatives and to put their, their plans in place for the coming year. In addition, we also offer co-op marketing. So if you have a really great idea or you're focusing on a niche market and you want to leverage into that by attending, let's say, a trade show and, and having a campaign around that, many times we'll, we'll co-fund things like that to help our partners. So there's, there's a tremendous amount that we do in addition, like I said, the, we'll push content. We have somebody on our team that is writing white papers um, we do get reviewed quite frequently, Gartner, Forrester, other um, analyst groups, so they'll create white papers that we'll repurpose and give to our partners so they can leverage them as well. We're always creating blog content that you can reuse, and, and it's just a nice kind of cohesive way to amplify our joint message and naturally since we don't sell direct, any leads that we generate as a result of our own website and blogging and telemarketing and activities and pay-per-click, those types of things that we do, those leads all get shared with our partners. So that's kind of a, a quick snapshot of some of the things that we, that we do. And, and naturally with Acumatica, there are a number of things that would be considered competitive advantages from a product perspective. Um, that we help you market as well. So, so we're well positioned in the mid-market space. And I'm not seeing any other questions. I do have a poll up for the audience. If the audience can answer this poll, that would be awesome. And I do have another poll after this. I like polls. They're nice and quick. <laughs> data and Don um so can I thought there was an interesting statistic um, about Acumatica it's if 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 um, end users want to implement Adam Acumatica on premise they can right so you have a lot of customers that are on premise as opposed to in the cloud correct yeah, so I don't know if anybody noticed this week, but we it's been an incredible week for Acumatica. At the beginning of the week on Monday, we announced that we got the PC Magazine Editor's Choice for financial software. And then two days later, yesterday, we just got a Cody Award for Best Supply Chain Management Solution. So, I mean, it's it's really, it's been, it's been great. Um, because I think we're so well reviewed that there are things that really set us apart, like where you can deploy the software. It can be in our cloud, certainly, but it could be in any public or private cloud, or you could even deploy the solution on the customer's premises. So even though we're a true built from the ground up cloud solution, no legacy product, none of the you know fake hosting kind of stuff, it's truly a, a SaaS product, it still can be deployed anywhere you want or on their server. And the other thing that's, that's really kind of unique is that we don't price by user. So that gives us a, oftentimes a price advantage. And another thing, very high level, is that many times other cloud solutions, they have to, you have to sell a subscription and the customer has to subscribe every year. 
But if somebody really insists on purchasing the software, they can do that too. So it gives us a lot of competitive advantages, especially when you look at the fact that we're, we're focused really on that mid-market segment. Companies with 10 million to about 500 million in annual revenue, that's a good target. Those that are, let's say, e-commerce focused, distribution, manufacturing, uh, hospitality, professional services, so broad appeal. And, and I think for those reasons, many of those reasons, we're winning these awards due to our flexibility. And I do have another poll up there. If you guys can just take a second to answer this poll, this will just let Dawn know that uh, you're interested in having her reach personally out to you about your interest in adding Acumatica to your ERP software portfolio. Be happy to do so, and it can be certainly a very confidential conversation. Happy to answer questions and, and help with any assessment that you might want to do. And I just want to take a, a minute to thank uh, you, Patty, for joining us at American Payment Solutions. We really appreciate your business here at ERPVAR and providing your case, case study analysis for us. My pleasure, Adrian. Thank you for the invitation. So our next webinar is on June 23rd, and that's going to be about how to get thousands of visitors to your ERP software blog. So we'll be review, reviewing that on June 23rd. I'm going to send out a follow-up email with the recording of the presentation you heard today and then also a button, a call to action button, a CTA, to register now for our next webinar on June 23rd. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Patty. Bye-bye. Thanks for attending. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.